I think we are now at the turning point. So uh, now we are moving from the research phase into the standardization phase. Standardization for 5G uh, has already started and will get in full swing in the next two months in April in 3GPP. And this is also where the consolidation of the various technology proposals will take place. So all the parties and companies can bring in their ideas and then there will be a healthy debate on the pros and cons and which technology will make it into the first version of the standards. So we are actually freezing the release 13. It's a big uh, release uh, with a lot of derivative awards in it. Uh, it's quite an important release for the evolution of LTE. 3 gp operates on a waterfall model. That means that when a single release is completing, we're already well along on the upper cascades of the next waterfall. So release 14 will be wrapping up uh, early, very early next year, mid next year, and following that will become release 15, release 16. So there are features that are associated with each release. At this stage, we have two major themes. One of them is a continuing evolution of, of the existing system, 4G if you will, and the second is a study of the next generation system. With release 14 also, we are starting this long -term, longer term project to work on the 5G system, which at the moment, it's common understanding that it will entail a new radio and a new architecture, and that will be addressing this uh, connectivity needs that operators will have uh, for the next decade. It would be for 2020, so it would be the end of 2019 that the submission is due. Whether we're done early, I, don't, I cannot say. <laughs> and the process that we are going to follow for this is the same as we followed for 3G and 4G, which is to first define what are the requirements, then we'll have an evaluation process of the technologies we can achieve this objective. And once we have selected the technologies, then we finalize the specification that they have to meet. So these, this process will take until 2020. We also expect that the spectrum to be used for 5G will, by that time, have been identified and defined in the term of what specific band plans are going to be used. WRC 15, which took place last November, has identified about 50% more spectrum than what was already available uh, until now for AMT. And it has also uh, decided for studies in preparation for the next conference in 2019. And these studies cover more than 30 gigahertz of spectrum. That, that's 15 times more than the overall we have to today. ITUT, my bureau, dealing with wireline aspects without this uh, radio part. So first, the deadline was finished at uh, last uh, December. So that uh, report was uh, available. And then the, the second phase is going to end of this year. Uh, they uh, develop of this, uh, based on this architecture. They have some collaboration with the uh, start of the collaboration with the open source community. The true commercialized, standardized products and services for 5G really will be coming out to the marketplace in about 2020 and beyond. Uh, you'll see a lot of maybe pre-standard announcements by operators and vendors before then, but they will be just that. They'll be highlighting pre-standard deployments and not the big ecosystem that will be built in 2020 and beyond. What is important is that we get something which is universally agreed and therefore from that we'll get the economies of scale for a single worldwide market. But, but clearly there is a trend, as you say, to go quick, move quicker and quicker. But I believe at the same time we should not hurry because uh, at the end of the day this needs to be available everywhere. As an innovative platform company, we like to facilitate providing uh, more values to our customers. And that's why we are putting a lot of efforts moving towards 5G. And this uh, open alliance uh, is one of the uh, efforts that we are making towards uh, evolution towards 5G. What uh, some of the uh, leading operators who like to uh, implement 5G in an early stage, they gather together uh, to come up with interim specifications that, that they can use to implement 5G. We are trying to shape up the, what, what 5G can potentially be, and then we, as we do this, we are very careful not to diverge from the existing 3GPP standardizers and activities. Uh, 
it's, it's actually the opposite. Given this knowledge and lessons learned, we like to contribute back to 3GPP so, so that they can facilitate what they're doing there. So by end of this year, our goal is to connect everything together and, and build an end-to-end -end system and have that tried out in the field in a si very simple form. By, uh, around, uh, by the end of next year, we're trying to scale up what we have built this year and then uh, try out different services that we think can create more value to our customers. We are working with Entity Docomo where we have a partnership. We are working with China Mobile. We are working with Deutsche Telekom and Vodafone. We are also working with our US partners like Verizon in order to understand where the technology is. They are all eager to have early trials uh, in the time frame of 2017 and 2018, also due to some sports events. And this will also help us to harden and mature the technology in order to iron out all the bugs and the pitfalls uh, which we might see over the years in order to have a highly mature system for commercial rollouts then at the end of the decade. We're also starting 5G trials. We've announced that this summer uh, we'll start a 15 gigahertz trial with 5G to start gaining an understanding of, of what millimeter wave and centimeter wave spectrum would be and how it would be used in that 5G environment. In fact, these trials ought to help us as we go forth and build the standards. We'll, we'll gain learnings from the trials and those learnings can be moved right into the work we're doing with standards. Well, I think it's always good for companies to play with technology as they look at new innovations and so forth, and then use that kind of experience to, to provide input to the standards process. You know, there are some, some the, maybe some downsides to the hype that goes around these, these announcements about test beds and trialing, but the good news is operators will be out there playing with the technologies, with their vendors, and then making inputs into the standards process. The focus for the GSA over the next 12 months is very much to establish what constitutes 5G. There's going to be a lot of marketing requirements around, you know, is it 5G or not? And I think one of the key things that we do is bring some, you know, clarity to what really is a 5G network. It could be that it needs to be split into two parts. There'll be a 5G core, maybe working with a 4G radio link. And so that's, you know, where we need to consider to, so we can really clarify what 5G really is today and tomorrow. 5G will not be done in one shot by 2018 and then commercial rollout in 2020. So that also means there will be a phase two and phase three of the standardization, bringing more features like we have seen on LTE. So there is also beside the 5G, the LTE evolution which continues. There will also be more world radio conferences coming, freeing up and identifying spectrum for deploying 5G also in the next decade, which we call the 5G era. I'm convinced that we will actually do the job and we will do the job on time. Uh, we are very well practiced in, in delivering this sort of package of work. But it does mean that there will be some very, very busy periods between now and, and 2020 because there is a lot of work to be done. That work is very meticulously planned, carefully mapped. We have our milestones in place. We know by which points in time we have to make decisions. Uh, we then depend on our large membership then to do their community building to make sure that we can actually make those decisions in time.